Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today I'm going to be making a lead holder. It's basically a mechanical pencil but with a very big lead. It is great for working around the shop. Um, I have another one but I've never actually made one so I thought we'd do a kit making a lead holder, much like a pin kit. Let's have some fun and try something a little bit new. We got to pick ourselves a wood and there really is no right or wrong and as we're going to be stabilizing this there there really isn't a best wood but i want something with a lot of figure in it i want something that really pops on a small piece and it's hard to find um, a wood that has a lot of intricate small figure uh, though firewood is a great source to find it uh, i'm going to actually go with the live oak on this because it just has one of those things that you just it's amazing so i've got the small scrap that will work perfectly but first, we need to be able to drill a hole through this whole thing to fit in the material. I want to make sure that I'm getting all the dimensions I want. It comes with a brass sleeve. And yes, you can buy the specific, um, the specific bit that has the exact size it needs to be. Uh, I actually want to make it slightly larger because I'm actually going to be um, drying it in place with the stabilization. So let's cut this down to length so we're not making it any bigger than it needs to be. I'm actually going to make it about a sixteenth of an inch longer than the tube. That gives me a little bit of leeway in the end and gives me that, that playing room. Once I cut it down to length, then we can test the bit. And so I have a, uh, a wood owl bit on here. And this is really close to it. It's a little bit sloppy, a little bit sloppier than I would have liked. You see how there's, there's a little bit of play in there. Uh, but with the stabilization, that's not going to be a problem because the stabilization will fill that in and, and fill it up nicely. So now we have that on there, we're going to put the ring on here and make sure we drill straight through this thing. The ring lets me know if I'm vertical because I can see if I'm left or right. And it allows me to move that up and down. Now we have that in, we can slide the sleeve into place and it's time to start doing the stabilization on this. Now stabilization is actually, um, it fills all the pores and basically turns the wood into plastic so that it doesn't expand and contract as much with humidity. And the closer you can get it to its final dimensions before stabilizing, the better. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to be ripping off a little bit of material on all the sides and taking it down to about a sixteenth of an inch larger than it needs to be. And that way I have um, some, st some clearance still to work with because it will change size slightly with the stabilization. As it absorbs the moisture from that, it will um, actually expand and become a little bit bigger than it naturally was. So once that is all done, then we can come through and clean it down. This side was actually faster to plane it off than it was to cut it down because it wasn't that much extra on there. Um, the other thing that people are going to ask is why am I stabilizi stabilizing with the tube in place? Uh, and that's because I actually find it to be a very good adhesive if it is done well. I'm going to be using uh, Cactus Juice, which is a brand that's not actually juice from a cactus. Uh, and we'll suck out the, the moisture in this, uh, or sucking out the, the air in this. And what this will do is it'll pull all the air out of the block. And the longer you can let it sit at the lower the vacuum, the more air you get out, the better your stabilization is going to be. So for me, it was about 20 minutes all the way down, letting it boil as much as possible. And then I'm going to let off the pressure. And as you let off the pressure, that then forces all of the cactus juice into the block. Let it sit for a little while without taking it out. And now we can push the tube down in, and then I want to wrap it up in some aluminum foil. And I'm going to wrap it up nice and tight, I don't want any of the, the juice leaking out. And then we're going to heat this up to a little over 200. We need to get the block up to 200 degrees. At 200 degrees, the cactus juice um, actually is a polymer that polymerizes and becomes the hard plastic you expect it to be. But it won't do that until it reaches 200. So usually 200 for an hour is what most people do. Um, I'll bring it up to like 250 and let it sit for an hour. And it is a, a very good block. Now, before we move on, because this is live oak with switching grain, I'm going to extra sharpen my number three and take this up. Now you can see I haven't used this in a while. There's some dust on it. Um, I don't use the number three that much. It is the plane I pull out when I want to do ultra fine work. And I'm taking off very, very light shavings on this. I'm going to start by planing one side perfectly smooth, and then I'm going to plane a second side square to the first side. And I'm going to then also take calipers and measure from the inside of the tube to the outside to make sure I have the same amount of material on the outside. So this will get me with two edges that are 90 degrees to each other and the same distance out from the tube. Once I have that side, then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and do the same thing on the third side. And I'm going to make sure that it is still square to the first side. 
And then once I have that one done, then I'm gonna rotate it one more time and have the fourth side uh, so that all four sides are square and all four sides are the same dimension from the outside. At this point, I want to see how far do I want to take it down. I'm leaving it a little larger than it needs to be, but I'm gonna pull out the ferrule that it will connect to and I'm gonna make it just a hair fatter than the ferrule, which means I end up having to take off a good bit. Here you can see the, the final square. So now to make this an octagon, I'm going to put it in there corner to corner and then plane down that corner until my calipers tell me it's the same distance from that flat side to the inside of the tube that it is on the square sides. And I'm just going to plane it down until I get this octagon. All the sides are the same distance from the tube and they are all um, at the exact same angle from one another and you get this really nice octagon. Because uh, the, the grain is so twisted I find it very easy to bring it over to a file and smooth down the surfaces and get them basically to their, their finished shape. Um, on the ends, because the tube is slightly smaller than the block, I'm going to file down the ends and make it, uh, um, make it the exact same length as the tube. Now I want to do a little carving on this. So I'm going to cut off a strip of paper that's about a half inch wide and wrap it around. Now, having done this, I think I would go with uh, 3 eighths inch, um, something a little bit smaller. But what this does is it gives me a guide that I can then chisel along. So I have eight sides on this, and each side will then have a line crossing at that particular angle. Because this paper wraps around and is taped on either end, it now has a perfect line that I can follow and have this spiral running all the way around. Now originally my plan was just to put a bunch of spirals side by side so that they're all running up, but then I thought, wait a second, since I have this one spiral here, what would happen if I twisted it the other direction? And I wish I'd taken a little bit more time here and actually lined up the, the paper so the crosses were all either on a corner or on a face. Um, in the end, most of them ended up being on a face, but there were one or two that were on a corner. And it would look a little bit nicer if I did that. But with this wrapping on there, it kind of gives the illusion of a cord wrap and a leather surface. And I was, I was really, really happy with that. Now you can see the ferrule on this is ever so slightly smaller than the outside diameter. And that's what I want, because I want that rather chunky feel to it. Um, but we're going to then uh, rasp off, actually file off the corner, and we're going to bring that edge down to the exact same diameter as the ferrule. And that will, when it goes into it, you'll get this nice clean transition from the wood to the ferrule. And now we can finish it. Boil the instant oil, dip it, let it uh, soak in as much as it wants. It's not going to soak in that much because of the stabilization. Wipe off the excess and then uh, put some paste wax on it to seal it in. And, oh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, happy, happy, happy. I, I just, this one's one that's very, very happy to me. <laughs> now you have to be very careful with this when squeezing it out. I'm gonna use a squeeze clamp here to push it in. If you don't do it right and it's not perfectly lined up, it'll bust out the side and, and break your, your pin blank that you just made. Um, you'll notice here I didn't put the clip onto it. Uh, it was kind of an accident, but afterwards I thought, mm, I don't think I wanna take it apart and put the clip back on. I kinda like it the way it is. It's just that simple shape. Um, and I'll have a link to this kit down below if you'd like to buy the same one. But it's a, a really nice design. I, I like it. And for a lead holder, it's quick, it's easy. It allows me to adjust the, the lead that I want. It gives me a good line, especially with a fairly hard lead in here. It works very well on rough lumber for making my, my line out and marking. Very, very happy with how this came out. So, yeah, I might uh, have to try this again in the future. It's kind of a design that's growing on me. So there you have it. We have our lead holder. Uh, this is, yeah, this one's happy. I think this is one of my favorite that I've ever done. Um, trying to get the uh, the wrap carving on it just right and then that the way the boiled linseed oil and the live oak come together that's ah, pretty that's really really okay, uh, um, yes this is a nice pen I like it <laughs> so I'm looking forward to using this for a long time to come uh, a lead holder is a great thing for doing rough marking when you're marking up boards um, it has a big thick lead so it's not going to break on you. It lasts a lot longer and it's just good for making those rough marks when you're getting things close. I don't use it for my joinery marking. I just use it for the rough marks when I'm just getting things approximate. It is a fantastic thing to have in the shop. Now some people will be wondering why I don't have the clip on the end of it and that's because I forgot to get the clip on when I was putting it together. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if I would want the clip because it actually goes in a, uh, in a sleeve so I'm probably going to keep it without. But uh, let me know what you think. Did I totally mess up by leaving that clip off or do I want to leave it just like this? 
So this was a fun one experiment. I've done, I don't know how many videos on making pins with and without lathes. It's one of those projects that is a great bit of fun because most people can do this in an afternoon and you get something that is a keepsake, something that you can give to someone and make them very happy. Or if you're selling them, you could probably make some money on pins and pencils. So it's a, it's a great project to have. I'll leave a link to some of the other videos I've done down below and it, don't let, and don't let the fact that you don't have a lathe stop you from making pens and pencils. You don't need a lathe, you just need a little bit of brain power. So uh, have a little bit of fun with it. So I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, members on the channel, people who've clicked that join button down below. Thank you. Without you, this channel would not exist. Um, it is because of members and patrons that we can keep going, keeping the lights on. Uh, you are the power behind Wood by Right. So thank you for that. If you do ever meet anyone who's scrolling over here on the side, tell them thank you. They're the ones keeping the lights on. And until next time, have a wonderful day. If the pin is mightier than the sword, what's the lead holder? <laughs>